welcome to the channel. Some Godzilla vs Kong news. I'm loving this stuff. I love, I love, 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 love me some Godzilla vs Kong. Monster vs. All day, every day. Um, so this is interesting. Basically, updated Godzilla vs Kong cast list reveals more plot details uh, and truth about Apex. Now this article is linked down below. Read along with me if you want. Um, maybe some spoilers, I guess, ahead. Sort of. Just click off if you don't want anything, absolutely anything, maybe even remotely spoiled. Uh, but I will say, first and foremost, uh, I, I have to kind of remind people, I'm doing new live streams here on the channel uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They're at 4pm Eastern Standard Time and 9pm GMT, so just stick around and sort of look out for them. Uh, you can also follow me over on Twitter at MissedAgeReviews because uh, I share them there. So. There you go. I've got, to, I've got to let everyone know that because YouTube's crap and it doesn't notify anyone. But this movie I'm really excited about. Like, I'm genuinely really excited about it. Um, I'm biased. I get I like about it. 100% I am. I just There's something about giant monster movies. I like it. I think they're good fun. Um, and I think we all need something good fun at this point in time. I don't see there's anything wrong with that. So let's have a look at this, shall we? So obviously we had that new two three second uh, footage which I've done two videos on I did a breakdown and then I also broke down with comparisons um, on the aircraft carrier Kong Godzilla just to, just to mock up the scaling and see realistically how big Kong is in that trailer um, so I've done two videos on it now and I plan to do a few more actually because there, there's quite a lot there there's a lot of theories that we could discuss um, and I like getting lost in movie universes I think again it's a bit of escapism. It's a bit of good fun that we need right now. Uh, but obviously we had Entertainment Weekly's uh, preview containing a mild spoiler prior to that. And then the cast and character details of Godzilla vs. Kong have now been updated. So, let's check it out. Uh, courtesy of IMDB, which is... Having dealt with IMDB, you can go and just submit stuff, right? You can, um, but it takes a long time to be updated. So... It's not, it's not usual that someone outside of the industry is going to go and do it, right? It's because it takes a long time and the forms are crap and it's not fun to submit anything through IMDb. My films are now on IMDb and they're a pain in the ass. So it's on IMDb, so I would imagine it's somewhat legitimate. But anyway, uh, it, it's a site which kept many of the character names and some of the actors playing them under wraps and with a deserving HT to the uh, kaijuologist, we know who is playing who. We can also confirm the existence of the rumoured organisation Apex and what it is. So here you go. Um, we're getting Dr. Serizawa's son, Ren, uh, in the film. So IMDb is updated. Godzilla vs. Kong casting list. Shun Oguri confirmed to play Dr. Serizawa's son, Ren. Now I like that. I think... I think in King of the Monsters, the death of Dr. Sarah's Owl was really... It was touching. It was a touching moment. And I think as well, um, it was one of those moments that set the stage for Titans working alongside humanity. Or supposedly, anyway. Um, obviously, now we've sort of gone you know, completely the other direction with this one. Um, so it'll be interesting. But I like that connection. Uh, hopefully, he'll still be maybe another Doctor as well. Maybe that'll be good. You know, we still have a Doctor Sarah's Hour on board. I think that's quite... I'd be interested with that. I think that's quite cool. Uh, so anyway, first off, Kaijuologist points out that we will be introduced to the fallen Sarah's Hour's son, Ren, played by Shun Uguru, a Japanese actor known for a 2014 live-action adaptation of Lupin the Third. Ren's father, uh, Ishiro, uh, which was played, played by Ken Watanabe, who's a great actor. Uh, he sacrificed himself to power up Godzilla in the last movie. Based on Aguri's place in the credits, Ren is an important character, though we know nothing about his arc yet. Now, uh, they do their billing. They do their billing in a, in a few ways. Um, but if I'm looking at this right, so Sh uh, Shun Aguri, there's no reason why he should be higher up in the credits, uh, specifically outside of how important he is in the film. Because Isaac Gonzalez has more credits than Shun uh, Oguri does. Um, so it would... And same as Carl Chandler, in fact. Because IMDb do their listing in, in a few different ways. They'll do it with top billing. Um, but then also they'll do it listing in terms of how many credits someone actually has to their name as well. 
So this is genuinely because he's an important character, uh, which is good. Like, again, I'm all for Dr. Serizawa's son. Now, uh, it appears that there will be several family dynamics in Godzilla vs. Kong, adding to the younger Serizawa are the return of Madison Russell, Millie Bobby Brown, and her dad, Carl Chandler, and the new character, Maya Simmons, played by Isaac Gonzalez. Uh, Dimian Bashir, who's a, he's a really good actor, actually, I like him, uh, portrays a character, Walter Simmons, with the same last name as Gonzalez's character. Uh, this parallel is a probable indicator that the two are father and daughter, or uncle and niece, or something along those lines. And yeah, I probably agree with that, to be fair. Um, you know, Dimian Bashir here, Walter Simmons, um, Isaac Gonzalez, Maya or Maya Simmons. Uh, yeah, probably. Now, I wouldn't get too caught up here when they're talking about family dynamics. Don't worry. I don't think it's going to be, you know, massively family dynamic based um, movie. I don't think that's what. I don't think it's been painted out in that way. Uh, we'll see, obviously. Um, but you also do have to have some form of human glue to stick the story together. So if it is a bit of a, a family story, uh, whatever. Who cares? Absolutely fine. Um, so, so far, all we know about Gonzalez's character from set photos is she works for Monarch, much like Aguri. Her spot in the credits gives the impression she is a central player, so we should see her around a lot of the action. Hopefully. I, I, I actually rate her. Um, she's not bad at all, actually. I think she should be in more things and is pretty good. Now, according to Gonzalez herself in an interview last year, Godzilla vs. Kong is about two young girls, and there is a good chance she's talking about Madison and Maya. Although well, she's not young, so... All right. Uh, we can guess with a fair amount of accuracy the soap opera of Madison and her dad will continue on. And if Maya has the same storyline, complete with daddy issues, uh, it's unclear. I Hopefully not. I don't think so. There's nothing yet to indicate that anyway. Um, and also as well, it would be surprising if Millie Bobby Brown's character and Kyle Chandler's character are still at odds with one another because it was part of the whole character arc of King of the Monsters. I'd like to think that they ha they, they have resolved that. You'd think by now they have, but we'll see. Now, it appears crystal clear that Alexander Skarsgård, confirmed as Nathan Lind and positioned at the very top of the credits, is the leading human character, uh, which is good. I mean, I'm all game for that. Now, if spoilers prove true, expect him to be closer to Kong than Godzilla or any other monster. It's fine. Who cares who the characters are close to? It doesn't matter. Expect... As well, an appearance by a certain robot kaiju uh, that's an infamous hallmark of Toho's franchise. Uh, and we know where it comes from. As noted, IMDb verifies Apex is a cybernetics company. And anyone who knows their Godzilla knows there is only one thing cybernetic expertise is good for here, which is Mecha Godzilla. So that's really interesting. Um, because I, we, we didn't know what Apex actually was, but now it seems to be revealed that they are. A cybernetics company. Um, yeah. Interesting. It almost looks like... Let, let's think about how they would have done all of this, right? You've got... Monarch making epic stuff. Then you've got Apex. You've either got two opposing factions there. Or, like businesses happen, you would have had Monarch subcontracting to Apex to make them something. Maybe. Uh, but this does confirm... Mecha Godzilla, doesn't it? Basically, uh, it's vir uh, it's virtually beyond a shadow of a doubt now that Apex builds the Steely Monster, as spoilers contended. And if they have armed guards enough for a security force, Apex is perhaps protecting the facility where they construct him. True, which is probably on Skull Island. Uh, speculation hints that they have an outpost under Skull Island. Um, which, yeah, maybe um, because there's also the H E A V you know, tunneling vehicles. Uh, given what we know about the Hollow Earth Anti-Gravity Vehicle, or HEAV, that explores what its name suggests. Mecha G may not be all Apex creates to further their ends, which is, this is the HEAV. It's quite a cool little thing. It's like a little hovercraft thing. Um, so those ends are thought to be at the heart of the conspiracy against the Titans, given away a few of GVK synopsises. Rebecca Hall, who was previously pegged to break bad in Iron Man 3, is at the head of that conspiracy and Apex, say the spoilers. So the same spoilers claim that Lance Reddick, credited as Monarch Director, is the right hand of Hall's character, uh, Eileen Andrews, which sounds like he functions as a bodyguard. Since Reddick plays a director of a major organisation that can't be, and the relationship with Andrews has to be more complex. Probably some like interpersonal relationship. 
an actual relationship. Uh, as conspiracies go, my theory is that she's secretly head of Apex in the vein of Kaiser Soze uh, and cozies up to Monarch to gain their trust, eventually stabbing them in the back and putting all her cards on the table. Yeah, but that's what I mean. I, I think it's that. I think there'll be an era of sort of business and capitalism in there. You know, uh, both companies going up against one another. Um, and then this is it. So how any of it plays out, uh, all fits together won't be known for a few months. Uh, but fortunately, Warner Brothers shortened the wait. So there's all of that. And then there's this part here. Um, or even be used as a tool for war against other humans. Uh, Della Rosa went on to claim that Monarch was not only developing this mechanized giant on Skull Island, but had already tried to create organic titans in the past. And that they are uh, the cause of several of the recent something titan incidents. Um, so look, there we go. We shall see. We shall see what happens. Um, I'm looking forward to this though. I'm again a massive child when it comes to these things. Hugely excited. And I'm always really excited um, when it comes to these things for the art books. Because they're so so good. Um, yeah I love the art books. But there you go. Apex Cybernetics Company. I would imagine it's going to be like a subcontractor to Monarch. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you've got any uh, ideas for videos on Godzilla vs Kong, please do let me know that down below in the comments. Uh, I've got a few lined up that I'm going to be discussing and kind of working my way through. But if you have any suggestions, love to hear them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. Please do let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Cheers. Take care.